sharing ideas and perspectives on how to come out of the of this pandemic is very helpful because there is no playbook. I mean, nobody in this room or on this broadcast has been through a pandemic before. And it's quite dramatic as it's entirely shut down parts of our economy. So uh, it's, I'm, I'm taking all ideas that I heard today plus any others. But I'll tell you, uh, just for a little perspective, I worked for one company for 38 years, PepsiCo. And, uh, you know, so on most big issues, I have one lens. That's it. One lens on how we would approach it. But in this, uh, po I would call it retirement phase. I'm not in retirement. I now work for four companies. They're all quite different. And it gives me a different perspective on how to deal with a crisis or how to deal with big issues. Uh, I'm on a very large retailer, a medium sized textile company and two smaller companies. One of those companies is the parent for Avasto, which is La Tortilleria, which I'm delighted to be part of. And Mr. Dan Calhoun is my boss. He's on the, I think he's still on today uh, listening. So I better do a good job. But as far as recovering from the COVID, here's a perspective I've got. Now, there's this, this two items that I would call uh, table stakes. You know, you have to manage cash and liquidity of the company. And I, you know, it's really interesting over a 40 plus year career. I don't remember ever, ha ever having a meeting about liquidity. Never. I have never had a meeting about liquidity. I have had meetings about cash, but it's critically important in these times. And the second thing is safety. It's also table stakes. We have to talk about protecting our people and making them safe. So those, I'm going to put those aside. That's not what I'm going to talk about today. The four companies I'm working with, they're, all of them are going to recover in a better spot than they went into this pandemic. And the reason why is they, even though they're very different, they have two common threads. One is the way they treat their people. And I'm not talking about just health and safety. I'm talking about listening to them during this pandemic and also communicating them. In fact, maybe over communicating to them. And the second thing is leadership. And I've seen lots of different leadership styles in my time, but the one that works during a crisis is one where you don't let the negativity take over your organization. And you don't allow yourselves to become the victim. You use this as an opportunity to communicate with your people. You have this attitude that adversity actually can become an advantage. It can actually make you better. And there's no doubt about it. If you enter with this kind of approach, you'll do better. If you end up playing defense, you'll get a defensive outcome. But I think there's really some great opportunities to take advantage of the, the problems that have come out of this pandemic and make it work for your company. So I've heard, uh, you know, who doesn't say the following? Employees are the most valuable resource. Well, I got news for you. Here's a chance to show whether you walk the talk. Our employees in our industry have been carrying a tremendous weight around with them for the last six months, and it starts wearing them out. One of the things that I worry about is the amount of fear that they have. They are fearful of being on the front line and being essential workers and having to deal with the risk every day of dealing with customers, whether they're in sales or they're in merchandising or store retail or delivery or in a production facility. And the other thing they worry about a lot is losing their jobs because of the constricting economy. And I think, um, you know, the, the real concern is you lose a job and you lose your benefits. This is the last time you want to be losing your benefits during a pandemic. But let's say that you're able to keep your job and you're able to keep safe working for a, a good company. Well, then you've got a series of uncertainties you have to deal with on top of all this other stuff. And one that I'm not sure how I deal with it. My kids have grown up, school or no school. If you're a single mom and you're sitting right now at home waiting to find out whether your kid's going to school, if they're not, do you quit your job? Do you stay home with the kids and try to teach them? Who takes care of the kids? There's a lot of stress on these folks. And the other thing is urban centers are closing down. At least I can tell you right up here in New York City they are. And um, some businesses will close. So does my company provide me the opportunity with being able to re remotely work? And hopefully we can do that in most cases. But there's a lot going on. Here's the one that worries me the most, isolation. So if you're working remotely and many are working remotely, after a while this starts getting to you and this isolation is really something. You know, you have no chance 
of having any real world interactions with people. And let's face it, we're social animals. Most of us who are in this industry like being with people. And it's difficult after a long period of time to be isolated and not be able to interact with other human beings. It's very difficult when you're isolated. And I'm, I'm seeing this myself. I'm working at home. That's maybe, that's maybe why you'll hear some dogs barking in the background. I've tried to control that, but um, you know, it's difficult to be inspired about your work when you're working alone. It's difficult to think about your career and how it's going to advance if you're a young person. And it's hard to build trusts and relationships when all you do is Zooms and conference calls. So I think there's a real need for leaders to step up during this period of time. And I think one of the things I would recommend is you're going to have to re-recruit your people to your organization. And I think re-recruiting them means that you show you care about them. You want to listen to them and uh, make sure that you're accommodating their needs, but be careful. You may lose your people if you don't re-recruit them because there are plenty of recruiters out there right now where the market has really started heating up. The second thing I do is listen to your people and what their concerns are. Even if you have to do it over Zoom or you do it on a conference call, find out what worries them, find out what their concerns are. If you have young people that are very career oriented, you have to have a discussion with them about their careers. You know, most companies, I would say, in the last six months have not had any conversations with their young people about their career development. And I think that could be a problem down the road. And then finally, I'm finding from engaging with some of our employees, they have lots of ideas of how to work through this pandemic and how to get the business back on track at a faster pace than we actually thought. The other thing I think you need to do is communicate a vision of where you're going to take your company in the future and make it exciting for people so that they can't wait to be part of the success once this pandemic is over and it will be over. So I wanted to give you a couple of examples and I'll do this fairly quickly because I know you're running late. Um, I'll give you one example of Home Depot. I, I feel like our employees at Home Depot are proud to work there. A friend of mine called me up recently and said I was in a Home Depot store. I asked one of the employees about how they felt about things working in the pandemic. And the person who he talked to said, I can't believe how much the company does for me and makes us feel safe. They literally bent over backwards to make sure that their employees are the most important thing in their company and their employees know that, they feel it. So I'll give you an example, they, they uh, on safety, they don't mess around. This is a disciplined process, masks, gloves, distancing, even the consumers. And then also making sure that the store hours were peeled back a little bit so there's less time in the store. And then as far as pay and financial security, well, they've got battle pay, uh, increased overtime for work that they do. There's incentives at store level for accomplishing objectives. And then there's also, uh, I would call it a very generous amount of time off for those people who are um, ill, who contract the virus, or people that are concerned because they're in, the, in that age group or they're in a, a group that they feel like they may be at risk. I, I think Home Depot's clearly bent over backwards and it shows in their results. Now Unify, which is a textile company in North Carolina, I'm involved with that. We make recycled plastic bottles into Nike gear and Under Armour and all those kinds of things. It's an exciting business, but frankly, it's been tough. Uh, if retail stores aren't open selling apparel, it's tough for us. I mean, we lose a lot of our sales. Recently, the, the state of North Carolina allowed us to open the office and people, believe it or not, wanted to come back. Now, we have a very, very disciplined procedure when they come back. They absolutely have to wear masks, even if they're in their own office by themselves. Masks in meetings, spacing out of people, uh, limits on the large groups. And we've really done very well with this since about June 1st, and we have not had one case since then. But what we're doing is meeting with small groups of people and making them feel engaged back in the business again. Uh, we have meetings with some of the salespeople talking about how we're going to get this business back on track fast. We have other meetings with young career, career oriented people talking to them about just calm down. Your career is alive and well. And I just want to assure you that we have a plan for you. And then innovation is no reason for us to in a pandemic is to slow down the innovation. In fact, now is the time to really step it up. 
because that's what will drive your business in the future. So our folks are very happy to be back, but we've also offered them the opportunity to be remote if they need to. Uh, we're communicating a bright future, but here's a new thing that I haven't seen it a lot of, and that's recognizing people that are doing a good job. We had some of our folks that had in the accounts receivable group had to work with customers on getting our pay, you know, getting our bills paid, and they did an, an, a wonderful job. Some of the salespeople opening up new businesses and accounts that we didn't have. Our finance team did an extraordinary job of making our liquidity and cash strong. So we're not all the time pay, just recognizing these people, giving them a chance to stand up in front of the board. We recognize them and at some point maybe even pay for doing great work. So let me just, uh, those are two examples. Let me give you two last things I wanna say. One is I've heard that the new normal is gonna be this remote working environment like Zoom. And I would just say not so fast. In my opinion, uh, for many business processes, Zoom is awesome. I mean, it's much better than a conference call. It can save you money from travel. You can do a lot of this stuff on Zoom. But when it comes to inspiring people, when it comes to coaching your people on their careers and their performance, and when you're talking about developing a trust with a customer, Zoom isn't as good as in person. And I'm making sure in the organizations that I'm involved with that we're not going to do Zoom for those kind of things. We're going to have one-on-ones and personal time. And even if you can't do it right now, you, you, you do it over Zoom one-on-one. -on -one, but then at some point when the pandemic is over, we need to get back to seeing our people and being with them so that we can inspire them and move them forward. One last thing I'd say is I had one experience. We were setting our plan in this company. And uh, for the next year, we have a fiscal year that ends in, in uh, uh, June. Um, and then the question became, do we set targets that are achievable? Well, nobody likes the performance right now, but let's say we have decided that we need to set targets that are achievable that make people feel like they can win. One great recommendation came from a board member where let's have two plans this year, the first six months and the second six months. The first six months I have some visibility to, and I can probably do an okay job of forecasting. The second six months, I have no idea. And, and if anybody thinks they have an idea, they're not being truthful. I believe that we could do spectacular in the second six months, or it could be bad, I don't know. So we're setting up our plans, two six month plans so that our people can view their plan and have a chance to achieve it we're going to make it possible for them to earn a bonus this year. And I really think it's important to make sure we have a recognition culture in our organization so that as people do great things, let's hold them up in front of the organization and make them feel great and be a great example for others. So I'll stop here because I, I know you want to move on, but um, you might feel that all the stuff I just talked about is basic management 101. And the answer is absolutely yes, it is basic management 101, but it's something that I think is one of those reliable business skills that can help you bring your organization back from the pandemic and move your business ahead forward and faster if you prescribe to some of these ideas. So Gus, with that, I'll end and I'd be glad to take any questions that you've got. Uh, thank you so much, Al. Uh, definitely, I got, you know, you were, uh, you were talking and people are uh, exploding with questions. So thank you so much uh, because you give us a different perspective. And I must say somebody uh, like you who has been in so many companies, uh, it really means a lot. And it's really going to mean a lot for uh, our attendees. So um, I got a couple of questions here and maybe uh, let me see this one right here and trying to... Uh, 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 what, what kind of measures uh, do you feel like stores need to do to be more close to the people, to bring, this is a, this is a question uh, that is really relevant to what you were saying, to be, what do they think that the owners of the stores probably need to do to be closer to the people, to feel that the people are being accompanied and to keep, at the same time, to keep social distance? So listen, that's a great question, and there is no simple answer to it, but here's what I would do. In the, in, you can meet with your people if you're staying separated. Yeah, here's something that drives me crazy. Um, 
if we wear masks and if we use social distancing, we many, many medical experts believe that inside of six to eight weeks, this whole thing would be over with in the United States. Why in the hell we are not following those instructions? I have no idea. Some people don't like wearing a mask. I would suggest you get a mask on because it's being responsible. And I think it could help us solve this problem. But if you had small groups of people, employees, and you're an owner, and you go into the store, you meet with the small groups and make sure they're spread out around the table where there's plenty of room. First, make sure none of them are uncomfortable, but then just spend your time asking them questions. Don't, you can give them a view on how things are going, but ask them what they think. How do you think we can fix the problems that we've got? How do you think we can be more safe with our employees? They, these people have the answers to so many things because they're right at the front line where all the action is happening. These are the most important people in the company, not the CEO, not the board of directors, it's the frontline people. And give them a chance to voice their opinion because I think you'll find they have probably more ideas for success than any of us have.